Now, how is mitochondrial dysfunction diagnosed? In thinking about diagnosis, it's important to understand that the terms mitochondrial disease and dysfunction aren't the same thing. So mitochondrial disease refers to a higher degree of severity and has a much more specific definition. So let me show you the criteria that are used for defining mitochondrial disease. I've listed these out over the next few slides mainly to give you a sense of how complicated it is. For example, compared to a lot of other disorders where a single blood test or an x-ray might be all that's needed to make a diagnosis. For mitochondrial disease, there's a rather complex scoring system that takes into account many clinical, biochemical, and genetic factors. So here you can see just the clinical criteria, and these include different types of symptoms and different organ systems, as well as a range of different tests that can be done on blood or urine or on cerebrospinal fluid, which is the fluid that surrounds the spinal cord and the brain, um, or on muscle tissue itself, or through brain imaging. And here's a list of the biochemical criteria, and most of these are done on samples of muscle or skin, and then there are genetic criteria also. And these encompass both mitochondrial DNA, which is the genetic material in mitochondria, as well as nuclear genes, so genes in the nucleus of the cell, because both are very involved in mitochondrial function. And in fact, there are over 1,400 different genes that impact the function of mitochondria. So across the clinical, biochemical, and genetic criteria, scores are calculated, and then based on scores, a diagnosis of possible, probable, or definitive mitochondrial disease can be made. Now, mitochondrial dysfunction is different because it represents a more mild form, so the criteria aren't strict and well-defined as they are for mitochondrial disease. And a physician would look at a whole range of different factors for more mild or subtle signs. Here are some of the common symptoms of mitochondrial dysfunction. There are many, many others, but I wanted to just give you a sense. So these, most of these are ones that involve brain function. For example, developmental delay or regression, language impairment, social impairment, intellectual disability, a whole range of neuropsychiatric symptoms, including ADHD, anxiety, obsessive compulsive symptoms, and depression, seizures, headache, hearing impairment, weakness, exercise intolerance, small stature, gastrointestinal symptoms, endocrine disturbance, and many, many others. Now, such a laundry list can be sort of overwhelming. So what are some of the symptoms that point to mitochondrial dysfunction in a particular patient? And these are things that, as doctors, we often consider to be classic signs. So for example, developmental plateau or regression, which is a plateauing or loss of skills, especially in the setting of illness or other type of physiologic stressor, which could be, for example, following a surgical procedure with anesthesia, following a vaccine, symptoms in more than one organ system, and family members with diseases that have been linked to mitochondrial dysfunction. For example, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, <coughs> learning disabilities, problems with hearing or vision, stroke or migraine headaches, a range of others. For example, you'll see here rheumatoid conditions like Sjogren's syndrome, lupus, or rheumatoid arthritis. What's the Sjogren's syndrome? Sjogren's syndrome is also rheumatologic disorder. Oh, okay. um, yes, and is it's, severe, it's autoimmune. It's um, dry eyes and dry mouth are some of the classic symptoms, but oh. it's, uh, it's an <laughs> autoimmune condition. Now, you saw before in the detailed criteria for mitochondrial disease all the different tests that can be done, but these are some of the common first-line tests. On the blood, a complete metabolic profile, which is also called a CHEM20, lactate, pyruvate, plasma amino acids, creatine kinase, ammonia, and an acyl carnitine profile. On the urine, organic acids, and on brain imaging, a technique called magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Now, Many of these tests have low sensitivity, which means that even if an individual has mitochondrial dysfunction or disease, these tests are often negative. And for that reason, testing might need to be repeated multiple times. Testing also may need to be done under certain conditions, for example, during fasting, or a certain number of hours after a meal, or during illness. So that's, a, that's yet another challenge to diagnostic testing. And for that reason, a doctor might recommend treatment even if the tests are